In this video, we're going to do the rise or the run. The rise or the run is a method on drawing a straight line on a graph paper. Um, and usually you need two pieces of information. You need a slope and you need a point. So rise or the run is to draw lines. Now let me explain a little bit what we need to know uh, about this process. First of all, rise of the run usually associate with the slope. And that's represented with M. And that's going to be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus, we'll write this 2, minus X1. Okay. And usually we represent that as the change in Y over the change in X. This triangle is a delta. It's a Greek letter and it's usually represented by a triangle and anytime you have this triangle with the letter it just means that you're subtracting. So the change in Y over the change in X and these change in Y's and change in X or this subtraction of Y2 minus Y1 they're just distances and these distances overall are constant through your line. So this fraction right is always constant and so the slope is some type of constant that tells you how steep the line is. Of course, M can be represented through a negative number or a positive number, so that's why you have positive slopes and negative slopes. So in this case, where does the rise over the run come from? Well, the change in Y or the subtractions of Y is called the rise. And then the change in X or the subtractions of the X is called the run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a problem and uh, we're going to do the rise over the run. So now let's do a problem. Let's say we got Y is equal to 2 over 3 X uh, minus 4. Okay, so let's say that um, we find the slope and the y-intercept. How do we do that? Well, there's a pattern, right? y equals mx plus b. We have the slope and we have the y-intercept. That's why it's called the slope-intercept form. We compare that to our given equation. And we can see that the slope is 2 thirds and the y-intercept is uh, negative 4. So the slope, right, is going to be 2 over 3. And the y-intercept, right, is going to be negative 4. But usually we represent that as a point. It's going to be negative 4, 0. So where is this? Um, point zero negative four. Zero means you don't go left or right from the origin and then you just go down negative four. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four right here. Okay, and then we have a slope of two over three. So here we're going to uh, do the rise over the run. Right, we got to think, hey, change in y over the change in x, y, and then x. So we're going to rise how many? 2, and then run 3. So from this point, we're going to go rise 2, 2 units up. Rise, meaning going up. 1, 2, and then it says run 3. 1, 2, 3. We're going to run to the right. So we're going to go up two and then run three okay and then from this point we can go up two one two and then run three one two three and then draw another point and then go up two one two and then go run three one two three right here and what i mean go up same thing rise and i'm going to draw the line 
And that's about right. And there it is. There's the line. And you can do these fairly quickly as long as you know where one of the points are located on the line. And then you go from there. Now, I'm going to show you something else. And I don't want you to get confused. So if you got this, cool. But if you want to know how do you go the other way, right? Because we were going rising to running three. How about the other way? Can we do it? Is there another way of doing it going down? And I can show you that. But again, don't confuse yourself with this. But the slope and the slope m is equal to 2 over 3. We know that. But there is another way of writing this slope, and that would be negative 2 over negative 3. Two negatives, when you divide two negatives, it will give you a positive. So, if you look at this, right, and you think of the rise over the run, rise over the run, it's a little bit hard to rise negatively and then run negatively, but you can. Instead of rising, you're dropping. So you're rising down, I guess. But you're going down, two, and then you're running to the left, three. One, two, three, right here. And then you're rising, in this case, negative two, and then running to the left, three. Of course, when you run to the left, it's, it's a negative number to the left. <clears throat> if you're rising negatively, then you're, of course, you are going um, down. And you can see that this line projects that direction, right? You can see that we can continue this line and it keeps going and it's touching those points. So you can go the other direction, but you have to um, adjust the, the slope, okay? So again, that's confusing, don't look at it. Just keep focused on the first part. Now I'm going to show you a um, problem where the slope does have a negative, um, um, the slope does have a negative value. So let's say that this time we have this equation, right, which is in standard form, and we need a point, of course, and a slope to draw the line if we're going to do this rise over the run. One thing I would recommend is to rearrange this standard form, right? Standard form, again, is ax plus by equals c, where a and b are not zero. Um, so the question is, can we find a point and a slope? Sure we can. Like I was mentioning before, let's solve for y. So let's do that. How do I solve for y in this situation? And why would I want to solve for y? Right? If we can solve for y, then we can put it in mx plus b form. And this is where I can find the slope and the y-intercept. So we're going to subtract 4x on both sides. We get 3y equals, these are not alike, so negative 4x minus 3. And then what I need to do is I divide by 3. Divide by 3, divide by 3. And I'm going to get y is equal to negative 4 over 3. x minus 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Don't forget the negative. Okay, so if we compare this to our uh, y, um, y equals mx plus b form, right, the slope-intercept form, we can see that the slope is going to be negative 4 over 3, and the y-intercept is going to be negative 1. So y-intercept, we can have a point, right, it's going to be Zero. Um, let do that. Let's do that better. Zero, negative one. 
And so we can plot that. Let's see. 0, negative 1, 0 means don't go left or right, and then negative 1, which is right here. Okay. And our slope, we're going to change it a little bit. We're going to, if you have a negative, right, uh, just put it in the bottom. I think that helps a lot. Okay. The negative, of course, can be in the top, middle, or in the bottom. We're going to put it in the bottom. It'll be easier for us because we got the rise right over the run. And again, like I mentioned before, when you think of rise, you're thinking of going up. Now, <clears throat> another thing too, and I didn't show you this in the pre previous video, but we do have our point, but we also know that the slope is negative, right? I don't want to show you this before because I didn't want to confuse you, but negative, right? A negative slope is going to be something like this. It's going to go down. So our overall line is going to go down. So no pressure here. Um, and again, we found our slope, right? But I changed it so that the negative will go down. And there's a reason for it because when I say rise, you always think usually up. So if we're going to rise four from this point, let's go up one, two, three, four. And then what? You're going to run three to the left, negative three, negative one, negative two, negative three right here. This is my point. I'm going to rise four, one, two, three, four. I'm going to run three to the left, one, two, three, right? And if I draw a line, and I try to draw my best straight line. Uh, close. Let's try that again. It's not great, but close enough. Okay. You can see that now I have a line. And um, I'm, I'm finished. This is it. This is the end product. Now, let me show you just a few other things. And one other thing is that you could, right? So we're finished. So um, that's it. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about this whole idea of, you know, should you put the negative in the bottom and so forth. So if, if I had this, right, um, slope and I told you to put it in the bottom, you can keep it on the top. That's not a problem. If we look at this, right, if we look at the slope, negative 4 over 3, and not thinking about the rise of the run, right? So slope is equal to negative 4 over 3. And not thinking about rise of the run, but you're just thinking about the change in y over the change in x. Then negative 4 means to drop 4 from whatever point. So I'm, at this point, I'm going to drop 4. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And then positive 3 means to go to the right three. One, two, three, and bam. There I am. Drop four. One, two, three, four. And then uh, run three to the right. One, two, three. And look, the line's going to meet right there. So you could do it that way, where you can leave the negative on the top. The thing is, sometimes when we think of rise of the run, sometimes it's confusing when there's a negative. You know, the running part is easy. You, you run to the left or you run to the right. But when you rise, do you rise up and down? Um, not quite. You rise up, but I don't think you rise down. So that's that sounds kind of weird. 